In this video, we'll be going over the chords that we'll later be using to make up the progressions that we can use to create songs. So if you're not familiar with what a chord is, it's basically when you just play multiple notes at the same time. You can play two notes, three, four, or even more. For now, we're gonna start with the one, three, five chord. And we're gonna use the C major scale just because that's the easiest one to start with. So if you remember from the previous video when we talked about scales, the C major scale is using the whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step pattern starting from C. And we just numbered it one through eight. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So using those numbers, we're gonna make a one, three, five chord. So we start from the one, we go to the three, two, three, then we go from the three to the five, three, four, five. So we have the one, the three, and the five. And that makes up our one, three, five chord in the C major scale using the note of C. So it's actually a C major chord. And the most important part of this that I want you to see is the pattern for the C major chord. So if I play this, you'll see that we have three notes in between the one and the three, and then there's two notes between the three and the five. And that pattern makes up a major chord. If you use this pattern for any other note on the keyboard, you're gonna be playing a major chord. So for instance, I can go over to my F and I can pl play the, the F key. And if I have three notes in between, that one and the next one, that's my one and my three, and then I put two notes in between the three and the five, now I'm playing an F major chord. And I could do the same for this note right here, an E flat. So if we played this, and we went three notes to the next one, and then two notes to the next one, that's an E flat major. So it's a really simple pattern that you can apply to any note and have a major chord. Now there's only two other patterns that you really need to know. And we'll go back to the C major scale. We start from the first note in the C major scale and we play the one, three, five. One, two, three, four, five. Now we know the first chord in the C major scale. Now there's a chord for every other note in this scale. So the second note will have its own chord. The third, fourth, fifth will all have their own chord, just like the C. So all we have to do is slide our fingers over to the next key, and we're playing the, the one, three, five chord for the second note in the C major scale. So that's a D, and we count up one, two, three, and then four, five. So now we have one, three, five for the second note in the C major scale. And then if we just move our fingers over again, we have the one, three, five for the third note in the C major scale. And then we move over again, we have the one, three, five for the fourth note. And then we move over again, we have the one, three, five for the fifth note. So that's the fifth note. That's the one, three, five. And then we move over again, we have the one, three, five for the sixth note. And the one, three, five for the seventh note. And the one, three, five for the eighth note. Now, if you are following along with that, you'll notice that the patterns changed for the chords. So the first chord is a major chord. And if I, as soon as I move over to the second note and play the one, three, five, the pattern changes. So I'll play that chord for you again. And now if we look between the first and the third note, there's two notes. And between the third and the fifth, there's three notes. So that is a minor chord. So now I can take that pattern of two notes between the one and the three, and three notes between the three and the five, and I can f make that pattern anywhere else with any other key, and I'll have a minor chord. And then there's only one other pattern that you need to know, which is if we go all the way up to the seventh note in the scale, so it's just before we get back to the root note, so we have the seventh note and we make the one, three, five. So we go one, two, three, four, five. 
So we have one, three, five for the seventh note in the, in the scale. And you'll notice that there's only two notes between the first and the second. So, or between the first and the third. So we have the first and the third, and we have two notes. And then between the third and the fifth, we have two notes. And it's called a diminished chord. So again, we'll go back to the C. And if we play the one, three, five for the C major, you'll see that we have a major chord pattern. And if I change that, and I move this note down, so then I play this, I now have a C minor, because I have two notes in between the first and the third, and then I have three notes between the third and the fifth. And then I can even change that to a diminished by moving that fifth down. So I have two notes in between the one and the three, and then two notes between the three and the five. So there's only three patterns that you have to know, and you can play those chords inside of the scale. So the scale is C major, and we have a major chord, and if we move to the next note, we have a minor chord, and if we move over, we have another minor chord, and if we move over again to the fourth note, we have a major, the fifth note will be a major, the sixth is another minor, and the seventh is a diminished, and then we're back to a major. So we can take that pattern and apply it to any other major scale. So if you go to the D and we apply the same scale pattern that we did before, we can see that we have the same chord pattern too. So our one, three, five for our D is three notes in between, and two notes in between the three and the five. And then the second note, we go one, three, five. You'll see two notes bet in between the one and three, and three notes between the three and the five. So it's a minor, and then we have another minor, and then we have a major, and another major, And another minor, and then a diminished, and then another major. So you can see that by applying the scale pattern and knowing these chord patterns, you can see the chords within inside of the scales. And what's really important is just understanding the framework. So it's really easy to break the rules when you know what the rules actually are. But keep in mind that these aren't really rules, they're just guidelines or sort of a framework for you to work within. And it's like a coloring book. You can color inside of the lines all you want, but nobody's really stopping you from coloring outside of those lines. That's how musicians have come up with different scales and different chords and different things like the blue scale. And again, those are the chords for the major scale. So you can choose any major scale play that scale, and then play the chords within that scale. So if we choose an A major, now you know the scale, and you know the scale pattern, and you know that every note within that scale has a chord. So the very first note, A, has a chord. It's the one, three, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, three, five. And then the second note, you could do the same thing. You count one, two, three, four, five. And then you just do that for the entire scale. And so every note within that scale has a chord. So you can choose to count out the numbers within the, the chords until it starts to make better sense to you, or you can use the patterns that I showed you for each of the scales. So once you know the scale, you just apply the pattern to each one of those notes and you'll have the chord for that particular note within the scale. 